but you want to kill me. Now you want to kiss me. Blow. <laughs> I'm going to amp this baby up. See how it sounds. <laughs> Alrighty, this is the FakeShamp.net podcast, episode two. Thank you for listening. This is Glenn, and with me, as always, is Jared. How you going, mate? Um, pretty good, man. Pretty episode good. two. Episode two. It feels like it's been three, three weeks. weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you reckon the first one went? Look, I was really happy. Same, I, uh, same. I was a little intimidated initially, but I think, you know, once we got going, we, we got there. Feedback's been pretty good. Yeah. Thank right. you to everyone who listened and lent yeah. us comments. It hasn't been any criticism. I've heard nothing scathing. Well, our iTunes reviews, one negative review. Oh, really? Okay, they, I've only seen three, but yeah. Well, there's eight reviews, like star right. ratings, I should say. Oh, no, yeah, I did and see one that. of them, zero. Yeah. Who's the fuckhead out there that... Uh, some got troll. some theories. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> we won't name and shame. No, no, no. All right. No, no, no. Well, we should say that this um, this particular episode is going to be a little bit Halloween themed. Definitely. Given that Halloween falls before our next show. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about some Halloween films. Um, but let's start about let's start off with what's been happening recently. What has been happening, Glenn? Ah, oh, well, the biggest news which I revealed this week on mm. on the Facebooks is Polygrind Film Festival in Las Vegas has invited Fake Champ to present Albert Pune's world premiere of the interrogation of Cheryl Cooper and alongside that we'll be presenting on behalf of um, Stuart Simpson and Addison Heath Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla which we mentioned on the last we podcast. did we took that in the last amazing film terrific film so I'm stoked and I bit the yeah. bullet and said fuck it I'm going to fly over there and I was do, surprised and do the yeah. presentation we were like, just talking about something and then next minute you message me and say oh yeah I'm going to be flying to Vegas yeah I joked I said first because, <laughs> you know, I'm going to fly over and then I said dude I'm, I'm flying over I was just yeah I was shell shocked it's an opportunity I thought I shouldn't miss up just to absolutely. meet absolutely just to meet Albert Pune yeah absolutely. represent the man know? himself yeah absolutely I wouldn't get that opportunity again so no, 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 anyway so that's the biggest news and on that screening, he's also going to be um, featuring Road to Hell, yes. which wasn't originally on the right. lineup. But he's the been... latest cut of the Road to Hell. This is version whatever the five. whatever the latest yeah. one is. Nah, that's what they'll get. Wow! And a sneak peek of um, Cyborg Nemesis. Right, and right. Cyborg Nemesis is an entire new film, or is this a film that combines all previous four films well, in one film? Has this it's work? it's its own film, right? Okay. But but it does have some connection. Two Nemesis and Cyborg. Okay, okay. But in an Albert Pune way, which is very ambiguous. Right, I love that. Right, yeah, I love that he whatever has a way of tying the whole universe. The way he did together. with Nemesis sequels, yeah. you know, it wasn't directly associated, but thematically it was. Yeah. yeah. So that you know, that's the biggest news. But um, Excellent. let's talk about some other things. What did we do today? Uh, today we visited Dick Dale uh, on the set of the Trasherama. Hey, Trasherama! The intros, the outros, the segues that uh, Misery Malice was uh, recording for him. Uh, so yeah, we got a quick glimpse at the set and we did an interview with Dick. We did, and uh, we're going to feature that very soon on our Absolutely. YouTube channel. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, cut that one together and it'll be up in maybe a couple of weeks' time. And they were a jolly bunch of people. They were. They were good value. Lots of great stories. Lots of we can't repeat on air and some that we'll save for the, <laughs> for the video. Itself. Awesome. So you can uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. We will announce it as soon as it goes up. What else did we do on uh, Fake Shemp over the last couple of weeks? Well, there was a... Cinemaniac on Cinemaniac feature that uh, lovely Justine Ryan featured. Right. That was an interview with Lee Gammon from the Cinemaniac. Yes. So the two of them went head to head and he fielded quite a few questions. A bit of a revelation there. Yeah. And so that's that. up on the, the website and on the Facebook page right now. He doesn't like any movies post the 80s by the looks of it. Anything from the 90s through to now, a, a cinema that he might watch. Mind you, he didn't mind Annabelle. Oh, right, I didn't know yeah. that. That was he, an interview. He, liked, he that, likes that, that movies. Did, uh, was that an interview? I don't remember reading that. Not in the interview, okay, okay. but if, you are, if you're following him on Facebook, you'll right. see. Okay. He does like a lot of those things. I think he likes to. Yeah, you know, yeah. Prefers a lot of the classics. But anyway, that's a good feature, and Justin did an awesome job on that. But uh, speaking of awesome jobs, I think mm-hmm. you did something this uh, last couple of weeks, which was quite amazing. Uh, and that was uh, in to do with the new monster release film, John Doe Vigilante. That's correct. I caught up with the director, Kelly Dolan, and we recorded an on-camera interview. And uh, he was like a really great guy, really down to earth. Um, had seen a little bit worn from just the filmmaking experience. I mean, this film was made in, I think it was 2012. 
and then it was a lot of post-production trouble. It's been a long process. It's been a long process. Yeah. I had a theatrical and a home end release in the US earlier this year, and now obviously it's finally coming well, out. Well, look, it's a Australia. great it's a great interview, and we actually paired that up with an interview with the writer of the film, mm-hmm. Stephen Coates, who did a, a Q&A written interview, which that is featured alongside the uh, video. That's also on the Picking Brain section of the website. So um, I think we're going to be doing a giveaway this episode where you can win yourself yeah, yeah. Uh, three or one copy of the film itself, John That's Dover Delante, on, on Blu-ray. On Blu-ray, yeah. And we've got uh, three copies to give away, but That's if right. you keep listening, we'll reveal how you can do that. That's it, later on the show, keep listening. Awesome. And now uh, what else did we get up to? Well, there was another interview you did. You've been a really I've busy been, monkey, I've man. Been, been busy. I caught up with uh, the festival director of Made in Melbourne. Ivan Melican. And uh, Corey Corbett, who is, uh, I think, sort of looks after PR sure. and sponsorship end of things. Uh, caught up with those guys to talk about their forthcoming festival that will be held in uh, a venue in Kensington. The name's not coming to me, but it's being held from November 27th to 30th. It's not Revolt, no. Uh, no, I think that I, yeah. I think you might be right. Could be, I think the Revolt yeah, space, yeah. That, that, that brings about. But that interview itself will be going up uh, a little closer to the festival, and those guys were great to talk to. It sounds like an amazing festival, so yeah, well, I'm looking yeah, forward to checking it's right. out. It's right, it's showcasing films. local film yeah. like and there's not many festivals like that around. No, no, it's very, very unique. Cool. Okay, well, I need to mention that today was the fourth International Independent Video Store Day, obviously been going for four years. It's a day that uh, encourages people to get out and visit their local video stores. They do that with the record stores. They do. There's a record store day. I think they're actually doing record store day uh, biannually now, funnily oh, no. enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's even the Black Friday record store okay. day, so they're doing it a lot. Well, yeah. Well, the, um, the, the video store day has been doing well for the last couple of years. I mean, we're losing video stores left, right and centre, yeah. so it's just a way to entice people back, not so much to you know, restart the video stores and give it new life. It's more to celebrate the whole culture of a video store and have that social connection to yeah, films, you know, yeah. and obviously the proprietor of a video store, I appreciate that, and we did some special event stuff. Cool. Um, but, yeah, so, obviously it's too late now for people to, to live the to independent video in store, it, yeah. but visit unless, their website. Unless they're in the United States, by the time this airs, yeah. they'll probably be independent Maybe. in the United States. It's big over there, there's a lot of stores yeah, that can imagine. celebrate it, but, you know, just keep your eyes on it, visit their website, and look at what they do, and, you know, just celebrate the culture of going to some place that you can talk with fellow nerds and yeah. you know, connect with cinema. You'll find me in the adult section. Oh, yes. Do you have an adult section in your store? I had to get rid of it, believe it or not. It doesn't. It makes sense. Look, um, it's happening everywhere. Well, no, my, my, my store is surrounded by schools. Oh, okay. Two of them are religious schools. Okay. So the complaints that used to come in, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I would So just... where do you find those films now? Are they in the thriller section? They're probably in the bloody op shop. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, there you go. No, we got rid of yep. them. They weren't worth the space they no, were on, you know. That's so you can get a porno shop and buy them. And people watch it on the internet these days. Well, exactly. Uh, and look, let's give ourselves a plug. We've got the Killer Clown screening coming up. Yeah, We really can't so. wait. I am so excited about this screening. Uh, on November 3rd, which is Melbourne Cup Eve, big, long uh, weekend for yeah, some, uh, we've got Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and we're doubling it up with 100 Tears, which is a really amazing splatter film. And I've been I'm so keen to see this film. I've oh, had to hold man. off trying to... I watched it again last week just to right. test, test to make sure it ran through properly and I'll tell you what, it's so fun. Excellent. The gore is excessive. Terrific. It's just so to. fun. And, and um, you've got, we've got exclusive interviews. We do. We've got uh, some intro videos from uh, Grant Kramer, who was the main star of Killer Clowns yeah. from Outer Space. Um, and, and he's he, got some information on the uh, potential sequel. He has, and you have to come along to yeah. To we won't say no, that. say no more. He does. Uh, he does give a little bit of a, a sneak peek, mm. looking on that. Yeah. But I'm not going to say too no. much. Um, but we also have a video from Marcus Cook, who I've always been saying Marcus Koch when I'm talking about him. Yeah, but then he said his own name. I looked at the. It, I looked at it and I thought the same thing. It's the pronunciation the same would way be Koch. It's yeah. David Koch. Yeah, like, like the, that awful morning show presenter. Absolutely, Mr. Well, Money. <laughs> I hate that guy. My mum downright hates that guy. So she should. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think the hatred's spilled onto me. But thank God it's yeah. Marcus Cook. <laughs> and his yeah. film is amazing. He's actually a really respected special effects artist in, yeah. in Hollywood. He works on um, Lewis Herschel Gordon's um, cool. uh, old show. He worked right. on Citizen Toxie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unearthed, and yeah, he's done a whole lot of stuff. If you yeah. go to the Killer Clowns event page, I've listed a whole lot of his stuff there. Cool. And a bit of info about him. So he's going to do a video to introduce his film. And it's just going to be fun. We're going to have um, free clown food upon entry. And I just mentioned this to Glenn before. I'm thinking that maybe I'll do a Lucky Dip style thing that as uh, as the patrons come through the door, they can put their hand in 
uh, whale that can put their hand in some sort of some <laughs> receptacle. Th- yeah, something. And uh, I'm going to throw a bunch of Blu-rays in there, and everyone will leave with a Blu-ray by the end of the night. Everyone that comes gets a free Blu-ray. Yeah, everyone, everyone. I can't guarantee they're all good. In fact, I can guarantee that three quarters of them will be utter shit. But there'll be there'll be a quarter. Good but isn't stuff that the in nature there. of a lucky dip? That's it. It's lucky dip. Yeah, it's yeah. lucky dip. Well, yeah. there you go. Free Blu-ray, and we're yeah. also going to put everybody that comes along into a raffle for a massive prize pack, which Very we'll probably cool. give away at intermission time. Awesome. So look, we encourage everyone to grab tickets at sixteen dollars for the two films. That's good. And man. that's November the third. So at the back lot. At the back lot. Why? Best best cinema in Melbourne. Yeah, I love that place. Absolutely. So we're going to move on to Excellent. our first feature of this uh, episode, which is uh, the ongoing random trivia. Oh, random trivia. Okay, yeah, okay. Well, why don't you go for the random trivia? Oh, have you, have you got a piece of random oh, trivia? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll do it if you want. I, no, I can do it. I'll do the random trivia if you do the synopsis for our focus film this week. Because oh. <laughs> I was doing the boobs <laughs> right. last week. It just put me on the spot. But okay, so I'll do my random trivia. <laughs> All right, go for um, it. It, it kind of connects with something that's happening right at the moment. Paul Schrader's just uh, written and directed a new film that was taken out of his hands by the studio. And they've recut it and done all sorts of things with it. But as a clause in the contract, Paul sure. Schrader's and everyone else involved in the film, including Nicolas Cage, uh, they're not allowed to speak ill of the film. So rather than speak ill or speak anything, they're not saying anything at all. Instead, they're wearing T-shirts, and on those T-shirts, it's got that exact clause that they're forbidden to say whatever, blah, blah, blah. Cheeky monkey. That's the way they're getting yeah. away with it. So <laughs> this bit of trivia, that's not the trivia. That's just something relevant that's, that's just, happening at the yeah. moment. That's just a bit of free trivia. Because he's, he's had rotten luck with... He no, has. Oh, well, Exorcist, you know, yeah, uh, Exorcist Dominion. 4, Dominion, yeah. yeah. Albert Dominion eventually got released. And it was still um, shit. Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah. It wasn't as bad as the beginning, though. It was awful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so, yeah, my bit of trivia relates to uh, Kevin Costner, in fact. Okay, yeah, random uh, switch there, yeah, but there's a connection. Nice segue. There's a connection. Um, yeah, Kevin Costner. So, uh, Kevin Costner starred in a film in 1999 that was directed by uh, Sam Raimi, and it was a baseball film. Was it baseball? It was baseball, wasn't yeah, it? For the love yeah. of the game, wasn't it? For the love of the game. game. That's the one. I actually and do like that one. I've never, you know what? I've never seen it. That could qualify for a guilty pleasure. And there's a reason I've never seen it. Why? Well, actually, there's not, but I'm just... Okay. I was using All right, it as cool. a segue. Well, anyway, continue. Uh, so carry, on, carry on, kind sir. When the film came out theatrically, Kevin uh, Costner decided he wasn't going to do any promotion for the film because the studio took a scene out of the film. The scene itself tested really bad with, uh, with audience test audiences, so the studio made the call to remove the scene. Subsequently, Kevin Costner was so angered, he says, I'm not going to advertise this film. I'm not going around. I'm not talking about it. He just did He nothing. refused he to refused do any down. publicity. Do you know what the scene was, though? Oh, please tell me. Uh, Mr. Costner wanted to get out uh, little little Costner, his tiny bull Durham. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, he... Uh, yeah. His little Robin Hood. That's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> his he, cock. That, that's pretty much it. He wanted, he wanted to go full nude in the movie. Oh, well, he did, and yet yeah, tested badly. Subsequently, the scene was removed. Was it? Was and, it? Uh, was the issue with the scene itself, or with what was on? God, the camera? God. I don't know. Okay, I just think the general American audience didn't want to see an all-American boy naked. He or, came out yeah. swinging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was I assume it was, it was a locker, locker room sequence. But in any case, yeah, uh, I don't know if that scene is a deleted scene actors, on the DVD. How many actors mm-hmm. like rally for their dick to be in the film? You and McGregor, I suspect, because in the 90s. There's a period in the 90s you could see any Ewan McGregor film you're guaranteed to yes, see. Yes, I penis. remember Velvet Goldmine. Just... Oh my god, then there was The Pillow Book, there was that movie, that remake of Nightwatch uh, oh, that he was in. Terrible it movie. Was, he was getting out at left, right, and said the only thing that he didn't get it out in was The Phantom Menace, and I was surprised because there was an opportunity <laughs> to pull out the old lightsaber. <laughs> but no, it didn't happen. As big as it's mine. <laughs> no, so yeah, that's my bit of trivia. So, Glenn, tell me what is your bit of trivia? Well, my bit of trivia breaks off into two pieces really okay. um, I would like to reveal as most filmies would know mm. hopefully Ace Ventura Pet Detective was originally written oh, classic. for Sylvester Stallone no I didn't even knew that, that that was written as oh my God. a comedy action film mm. a la shoot stop all my mum and shoot so it was Sylvester and, and Stallone Oscar, remember Oscar oh, I remember he directed yeah. Oscar yeah oh jeez mm. actually did he direct it I think I, he I think, just wrote it no, someone I, I thought someone else directed it maybe maybe, maybe. Like, not John Landis Ooh. Oh, weird, was it? 
Yeah, we're going to have to oh, reveal okay, we're this gonna, later. We'll find that out. Yeah, and we'll, Sorry, we'll, we'll so I'm you interrupting Oh, you've got me now, man. I'm like, it was someone big, and I'm like, God, that's weird that they And we're recording this with our laptops in front of us so that we can't hear the tinking of keys. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Someone's sitting there going, Jesus Christ. I know. But, yeah. okay, so I did not know that. It was made as a sort of... It was a comedy, obviously, right, and he's yeah. going to be a pet detective because he's no longer cutting it as a serious cop yeah, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But that flows on to the fact that Beverly Hills Cop was also written for Sylvester Stallone. Wow, I didn't know that yeah, either. So that was a more serious kind of action wow. vehicle before Eddie Murphy came along. And both yeah. Eddie Murphy and Jim Carrey took those scripts and yeah. tweaked them to their own sensibilities. And then were both those, those, both those films were yeah. breakout roles. I mean, Eddie yeah. was on the rise, but that was a breakout film for him. And for Jim Carrey, that was the breakout it film. It was. I he remember... had Earth Girls were easy before that. Well, he that was, was that it. He was offered the film and he said, I'll only agree to it if I can rewrite it. Right. With my own jokes. Yeah. yeah. And have a look. I oh mean, my God. It's, um, it's, a, it's a amazing... It's a quintessential it's, oh comedy. God, it's a classic. I know that thing word for word. Same. Word for word. Same. But the sequel... The funny thing about the sequel yeah. is obviously it's a different film. Very different film. But it's it's as classic and cultish as the Ace. first one in its own regard. You know, I've got I've got a, something to admit. Oh, I, I saw Ace Ventura when Nature Calls when yeah. it opened theatrically. I think like the second day it opened, dude, because uh, I was such a huge fan of the original. Sure. You were backward by the time the second one came out. Saw the second one theatrically. <laughs> uh, didn't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. And I've never watched it ever again. And wow. I've always been meaning to watch it. In fact, I bought it on DVD. I never watched it. Well, I and I recently upgraded to Blu-ray. And you still haven't watched it? And I still haven't watched it. But I'm going to get there. I have watched number two yeah. more than I've watched number one. No! I love number one. It's, it's my yeah. preferred film. But yeah. I just returned to number two because it's just... The replay value? Or? There's a lot of replay yeah. value in it. Peanuts? Yes. No, it's a carry-on. But that's true. <laughs> so I much, kind of man. remember that. It's so There's much. There's some bits no, I remember. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, man. But Bob Gunn. I'm going to do it. Yeah, definitely the rhino scene. Like, you know, Oh, yeah. The birthing scene. Yeah, it's, coming see, out of it's the, much more a Steve Odenkirk film than it is a yeah. Jim Carrey film. And he vowed never to make sequels after that one. Why? Right. Jim Carrey. And now he's doing Well, I know. But that, that was a film that probably needed needed to be made, maybe. Yeah. I don't know after Dumb and Dumber. If, I mean, he wasn't involved. No. In it, I don't know if the franchise in another film. And let's I'm not, glad it's happened. Let's not mention the third Ace Ventura film. Oh, the kid one? Ace Ventura Jr. Oh, yeah, I never saw it's it. Look terrible, awful. terrible. Yeah. Yeah, well, you went there, though. I did go there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I had to take one for the team. Tell me, you took it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took it hard. Good work. All right, cool. Well, let's um, move on to mm. our movie of the week. Yes. Every podcast we do, we watch a film first, and then we come along and discuss it. And being because this is a Halloween-ish themed kind of uh, episode, we decided to do a Halloween themed film. And it's mm. funny because we were both thinking of the same thing when you it's mentioned crazy. it. Crazy. And we watched, um, you can tell them what we watched. Uh, we watched a little film from uh, Jeff Lieberman called Satan's Little Helper. And this could probably qualify for an obscure title as well. And probably, possibly a guilty pleasure as well. <laughs> yeah, it's just um, after watching it tonight and yeah. having our, our perceptions of it sort of a little bit. It's a, it, was, it was a little change. And I think the other thing is that uh, I, at sight of Glenn, I've never actually met anyone that enjoys it. <laughs> I love it, My man. My mum downright loved oh, it. Uh, well, I love a, that you yeah. watched it with your mum. I know, yeah. It was the first time we watched it. And uh, yeah, we watched it and she turned to me at the end of the movie and she said, well, that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've, we've both got parents like that. I was saying to you yeah. before, my dad would watch a film and say, geez, that was crap. Glenn would love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister has um, awful taste in horror oh. movies, contemporary horror movies, but she even hated it. Oh she my. gave me the copy. She well, said, you can take it with you. Let's give people a bit of an education yeah. on this one. Uh, Satan's Little Helper. It's a, obviously a Halloween-themed movie about a serial killer in a small town that um, attracts the attention of a little boy. I guess he's around about seven or eight years old, mm. thinking it's all play along. And the two of them walk around this town murdering people leave, leaving their corpses set up on doorsteps and balconies as if they're costumes or yeah, props yeah. and they get away with it because it's Halloween so one it's night of the year such away with an it. amazing concept and look it's arguably um, executed you know less extravagantly than well, it could have been that's what I was going to say I think that the story and, and the script are yeah. very strong yeah absolutely I think it just the concept production values. the concept is what attracts me oh, to it and that is what I love about such it such a strong concept and the imagery itself is quite confronting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like the, 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 the jovial nature of it, you know, oh, is quite, really disturbing. It's, it's, it's completely on PC. And there's, you know, there's, uh, there's cat mutilation. There's, uh, <laughs> God, there's uh, blind people picked upon. Um, oh, anyone, anyone, children. Baby in a yeah. stroller. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Nothing, nothing safe. No. Nothing sacred. That's right. And this film is um, just... It's aesthetically pleasing, it is. Like, you know, the, the setups are good. It's just, as you said, it kind of feels a bit video-ish. Yeah, I think it, it's let down a little in the cinematography and, and the lighting of the film, which is a shame. But the score itself is really good. It is. It's sort of, um, it's very, it's an elaborate piece yeah, of music. it's a big, big For score. the type of film it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And I just think it's a, it's sort of a... It's mis- ambitious. Misunderstood and forgotten totally. kind of film. And, yeah. When it came out, no one watched it. The few people that did had nothing nice to say about it. And no. I think it's a great film. Yeah, I, I don't know how you film. can be so scathing of a film like that. No, because you know? it's original. Yeah. That's the thing. In a, in a uh, you know, time when films have been remade and, you know, concepts have been rehashed, along comes something that's really original, that obviously doesn't get the financing it deserves, and uh, it cops criticism. I'm sorry, but it's a good film. It is a good film. Yeah. It's a holiday film. It's yeah, a great it's holiday a film. And we watched it tonight. I mean, we must admit, we were making fun of it as we went. Well, we, were, yeah. we were celebrating it at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. It was in equal measures. Yeah. And I think what we also made a lot of fun about was uh, Amanda Plummer. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was I think she's there. definitely she's something. She's horrendous, yeah, man. Uh, I'm thinking she's struggling to look straight like she's not popped up on something. <laughs> on candy? Uh, yeah. Uh, something else. I, I, I dare you watch the film and not agree with us. Yeah, she, she's disturbing. There's something really... Yeah, her, she looks beguiling. <laughs> beguiling? It's, it's terrifying, <laughs> in fact. But, um, yeah, no, what a film. What it a is. Film. And we've... Um, Jeff Liebman, what else has he made? Oh, he's made some of my favourite films of all time. One of my childhood favourites, Swerm. Swerm. Uh, Blue Sunshine. Yep. Just Before Dawn. Remote Control. Oh, uh, Remote Control. I've actually just purchased that one on Blu-ray. Oh, it's a great edition. Haven't received it yet. It's a good transfer and there's a commentary track. And I'm pretty sure he signs all the copies that oh, you wanted to. Straight from his so, website, so I hope yeah, so. Yeah, from jeffleadman.com. And speaking of Jeff Liebman, we're going to actually be featuring an interview with him on the website That'll very soon. It'll be um, on the Picking Brain section. And um, I can't wait to, to pick his brain. Absolutely, I need to know. Was Amanda Plummer on something? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was on Pop Rocks and Coke, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So I don't know. Do we have anything more to add to that one? Um, look, I just I, it's probably going to be a bit harder to track down. I mean, it did get an Australian release, but it's likely to be did out it really. Of, yeah, it was out through Anchor Bay locally. Wow. Um, but I don't know if it's still in circulation, so it could be tricky to find. But look, I suggest jumping on the internet. You'll probably pick a copy up for about three dollars. You'll find it on before. eBay. But, and... but don't buy the UK DVD. No. Because we watched that one tonight, and there's Terrible. some serious uh, ghosting issues yeah, on it. Yeah, the transfer is not the best. The US edition's got a commentary track and a behind the scenes feature in, so I mean. I don't even yeah. know or remember where I obtained that one from. Right, yeah, yeah. It would have been online somewhere, and I just thought, yeah. I've got to have it. Yeah. The cover art is amazing, and I thought, geez, I need oh, that in it, my the collection. The US cover art's even better, dude. Is it not the same? No, it's. Uh, I can't even begin to describe it, but it looks very cool. Mm. Okay. And it's better. Uh, that art uh, that you've got is different again from the Australian art. I think the Australian art was by far the worst, right, sadly. I'll be Googling that later mm. on tonight. Cool. cool. All right, well, we're, let's wrap that one up and move right. along to our next subject, which uh, is arguably my favourite subject. It's actually had a lot of good feedback from people. And we're going to talk about our guilty pleasure movies. And um, I assume you've come up with a doozy this week. Sir, I have. The only thing I ask of you is uh, I have written a thesis on this one. Oh, this uh, could this could be a mm, podcast regular thing is, as well. This is just... really big, this one. The uh, the other movie that we're doing, the obscure film, yeah. substantially shorter, and I made that review much shorter okay. so I could give due attention so to is this guilty pleasure. Oh, so this is not my opportunity for a toilet break or anything like that. I must, uh, I must be present. You've got to be present <laughs> for this, but uh, it is going to... Look, it, it will take a little while to get through it, but I assure you, by the end of me reading this out to you, you will absolutely want to see this film. I'm um, almost guaranteed. If you haven't seen it already. I'm celebrating. Okay. Should I, should I tell you the film straight away and then tell you my blurb? Or I reckon you, you no, 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 you, you've got to tell us what it is because okay. otherwise we're going to stick right. to the what fucking film. Yeah, that's right. Um, the film that I've chosen is a little film, an Australian film, in fact, from we, 1990. We should also mention that neither of us know what our guilty oh, yeah, pleasure no, no, movies no. are. We spring, has no idea. I've got no idea what he's going to choose. We spring these upon each other. So go for it. Okay, so from 1990, an Australian film called Blood Moon. Blood, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. that, that's did really... You, did you see this movie? 
I, years ago. Yeah, I know of yeah. it very well. I don't think I could recollect it with no clarity <laughs> or anything like that. Well, it, uh, what, having watched it this time around, I feel less guilty about it. Right. Um, though that said, it's not a great film, but it does have a spot in my heart. And part of that reason is because it was actually shot at the high school that I went to, ah. Catholic Boys School, but it was shot the year before I started there. So I was on a waiting list to mm-hmm. get this school. You know, my parents really wanted me to go to the school. I was on a waiting list for, you know, a couple of years and they got to year five and I was moving and I didn't really want to move schools sure. until I found out the yeah. Blood Moon had been and shot damn there. straight I'm going and I'm there. Like, they shot a horror movie there and it came out within the first three months of me going to the school which oh, was that's pretty amazing. cool well, do you so, want to go through any stats or do you just want to lay straight into it oh, I'm going to lay straight into do it, it. alright here we go let me, so, let, me, let me grab a proverbial seat <laughs> here's the, uh, oh, here's the uh, go for it. synopsis to begin with Short and sweet, when a senior level student goes missing from a Catholic boys' school that he attends, initial speculation is that he's fled with his girlfriend from a neighbouring Catholic girls' school to avoid the persecution and potential separation from one another by their families. Uh, However, the principal of the boys' school has quite a different suspicion and brings in the assistance of a local police officer to uncover the truth. As the officer digs up, uh, as the officer digs for answers, more and more students go missing and the audience is treated to bear witness to the grisly dispatching each and every student body. Okay, so now what I've done something a bit different rather than just like read you some crazy crap that I've conjured. Mm-hmm. I've broken it down into kind of minutes in the movie that would sell the movie. So I'm just going to tell you... You don't, you don't want to watch the movie right now and talk through it? Oh, no, no. There should be a commentary. <laughs> okay. There's no special features on this thing. Right. Blow, blows my mind. I want to do the special features. Prepare yourselves. Here we go. Okay, so uh, before we hit the five-minute mark, there's a communal shower scene in the ladies' dormitory. At school. At, a, at my school, yes. In what was a boys' school, but you know, filled with lady actresses. But yeah... Uh, and it's a full-on titty fest? There's titties. Right. There's no uh, muff, but there's titties. <laughs> and that's within the first five minutes. Awesome. All right, so... Uh, within the first 10 minutes, uh, Jackie, this girl, discovers her boyfriend, Rich, dead in the woods, or the bush, you know, we say bush, but they say... You said there was no bush. <laughs> um, there's a terrible overdub of the killer's voice that sounds like it's coming through a perfectly mixed uh, PA. That voice is heard uh, as Jackie's pursued through the bush by an unseen announcer. Uh, Jackie buys the farm and we have her first on-screen kill before 10 minutes is up. There's also a quintessential piece of 80s matte painted backdrop in this scene. I love Guess that what it stuff. is? A what? A blood moon! Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> okay, by 15 minutes we uh, we hear the terms. We've heard the terms: preggers, zits, and shit for brains. Oh my! They're all used. Uh, before 20 minutes, there's a blonde topless sunbather, and Woolworths is referenced. As Woolworths you... or Woolies? No, as Woolworths. Sadly, Woolworths, sadly. Yeah. sadly. Um, before, uh, oh, well, 25 minutes in, there's a school dance where we have two girls doing a seemingly impromptu synchronised dance routine with merely their upper bodies. Neither appear to have done any acting prior as they <laughs> smile like blitzed out ravers the entire time. And you can tell it's taking every single part of them not to look at the camera. Um, that, that's beautiful. But at that very same school dance, we have an 80s hair band called Vice that play a wonderfully cliched rock number with the following chorus. And I wish I could kind of sing it. Maybe I'll try it. Hey, do it. Stand tall. Walk proud. Reach out. You're playing for the world. Don't cry. Be strong. <laughs> reach out. Go into holding on. I think that's it. That's Vice. really, really Trey Parker of you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounded like that, uh, was it the, what's that, uh, you know, BDBA or something? Or yeah, whatever. Something like yeah. that. Uh, also, Vice returns shortly after to deliver an extreme-esque ballad. According to the end credits, Vice didn't pen any of their own tunes, but the track that's performed over the closing credits by them was written by Brian May. Wow, and do we get a sample of that? Uh, no, no, no right. sadly. That, that one is actually called Blood, Lucky people. Blood Moon, that song. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and ramp this up. By 35 minutes, we have an Aussie actress doing a rather unconvincing American accent over the other end of the phone. Uh, at 33 minutes, we've got more nudity with some nipple kissing. What? Nipple kissing? And here, I was talking about this with my wife. There's never enough nipple kissing in films. Never. And it can go either two ways, right? Extremely sensual or just plain awkward. There's no middle ground. We need more nipple kissing in movies. Is it a lick or a kiss? Uh, it's a suckle and it's a little well, kiss. Speaking of Aussie yeah. nipple kiss, we had Paul Mercurio and Dana Delaney right, in yeah. Exit to Eden. Yes, he butters yes. her tits oh up. He God. put cinnamon sugar on it. That one, Dan Aykroyd in that as well. Yes, and yeah, Rosie O'Donnell, directed by Gary Marshall. Oh, God. It racks up about 300 bucks on eBay if you want to buy it. 
Really? Yes, I've got a copy. It's oh my I used god! I love it as a kid because it was full of tits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some genuinely good sex. Yeah, the film's fucking terrible. Yeah, you that know? was a bad move for Paul Mercurio. It really was because he's he never really had one good now. move after Strictly Boring. Back of Beyond, that was one of the ones. Well, he yeah. did the um, he did the prequel to Nine and a Half Weeks. Oh, yes, that was the prequel. Cool. Was that like? Four and a quarter. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> You're trying to get smart. No, I was trying to work out the maths, and it wasn't. No, working. it doesn't work. But anyway, there's another nipple kiss that. <sighs> Love nipple kisses in right. movies, and that, okay. and that was written by Anne Rice too, who did the Vampire Chronicles. Oh my god! And yes. she had something to say about Tom Cruise playing Lestat. I know. What about the Paul Vampire? Mercury, when he did that? that? What? I know. Okay, so getting back to the Blood Moon. At 38 minutes, we have some more bare boobs being groped to death by a rather enthusiastic young lad. I love this movie. <laughs> a genuinely believable performance by him, I must add, as it looks like the first time he's physically held a breast in his hand since him. <laughs> uh, shortly after the strangulation of those memories, uh, our boob novice gets a strangulation of his own when the killer takes to him with their trademark barbed wire. Uh, we don't get to see the poor girl kick the bucket, but we do get a beautiful match-on action slice of editing with a zoom in on the victim screaming and a zoom out of a choir girl singing in the following scene. You know those, you know those zoom yes. in? Oh, God, I've done this so, <laughs> so tacky. At 44 minutes, we've got uh, some mature breasts briefly being displayed and a young man's ass cheek for the ladies. Uh, the scene, in fact, is between a 17-year-old male and a female teacher in her Ooh. early to mid 40s from the neighbouring girls school wow uh, okay and then that teacher's husband is a creepy toad like character a teacher himself he doesn't quite share the bond with his students <laughs> that his wife does he does however have a close somewhat unnatural kinship with felines which I guess is lucky for him as it's likely to be the only pussy he'll ever get oh my god I, I can't believe I you, went just, there. you just did that <laughs> man. that's terrible um, we've just lost so many people well, <laughs> I, no, I was like I read that to Danny and she goes you can't that. Yeah, I did. You Sorry. Were, you yeah. I'm still married. <laughs> um, so, look, we're less than halfway through the duration. I believe I've given you more than enough reasons to check out this guilty pleasure. Uh, Blood Moon, check it out. Now, it's essentially by the numbers for Malik Slasher. It, had it been produced in the United States, I think it probably would have been a cult favourite, though since it's produced in Australia, it seems like a dirty little secret so much that the studio responsible for its production, Village Roadshow, seemed to have disowned it. Uh, thankfully, Mad Men actually saw fit to release it on DVD maybe about three, four years ago. I need to find it. It's a shame. There's no special features on there. That doesn't matter. Uh, good movie, it doesn't matter. And now, and I told you earlier that I'm being inspired. I really want to own the Australian theatrical artwork, which is very different from the video art. Uh, in fact, the art's probably... You told me that, but you didn't tell me what the movie was. Oh, you no, said, yeah. the movie I'm talking about... Let you see really the art. Oh, like cool. the, and they didn't use the art on... The, the VHS that came out, the Roadshow one, yeah. was double-sided sleeve. They didn't use the art on either side. This is a completely Strange. different art they use wow. for theatrical release. Also, okay. the film was released in theatres as an M, right? And then yep. when it came out on video, they rated it R, and it was a different, slightly different cut with a bit more right. graphic. It, it, was this an Anthony Ganane? Uh, no, 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 no involvement at all. In no? fact, the director of this only ever directed two films, but he was a camera operator on Empire Strikes Back. Wow, that's yeah, a bit yeah. of a leap up. Yeah, I know. He did lots of, lots of work Did he get the job the based on Blood Moon? <laughs> <laughs> Blood Moon. Uh, so what else can I add? Uh, what I will add lastly is when the film played theatrically in Australia, just before the end, I think it was 20 minutes from the end, they had like a William-esque, a William-esque, William Castle-esque mm -hmm. sort of inspired gimmicky fright break. Right. And uh, this on the poster, this is what it read, it said, take the blood moon challenge. <laughs> 30 minutes before the shocking ending, there'll be a break in the movie. If you're too chicken to stay and face the suspense and terror ahead, simply follow the yellow streak to Chicken's Corner, where the price of your admission will be refunded in full. But if you're not a cluck, you'll take the challenge and live to tell of the horrifying conclusion to Blood Moon. That's genius. It is, but guess what? The finale, Everyone, the, the end of, Well, I, yeah, I think, I think that would have had a lot of, yeah, a lot refunds. of people getting refunds. Here's the disappointing thing. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the ending to the movie is pretty shit. Okay. So, like, I love I think, that there's like this thing. I think maybe they're hoping people would leave and not ask for their money back, right? Because the ending's crap. Uh, but they, the movie they, itself is a lot of fun. They're titties. And, you know, in, in there the, are so many. In the end, there's like, probably more boobs than there are bodies. You know, being being slaughtered. Well, there you go. Bang for your buck. Bang for your buck. And is that is that that's, that's that is it, it. Sir, That's it. Blood moon. Blood I'm moon. Probably going to write a review about that one, put it up on the site because there's <laughs> probably more. Yeah. yeah. That um. That, well, that there you go. That's um. Jarrett's guilty pleasure. And guilty. is it a real guilty, guilty charge? Is it a real guilty pleasure? Oh, look, I don't think there's going to be anyone out there that's going to sing its praises. It's right. sitting on a four point four on IMDb, but I gave it a six because hey, I think we tried. 
we made a slasher film probably about seven years after the rest of the world had been, <laughs> yeah. you know, and once they uh. died off well and truly, but we we got in there, we tried. And what and, year was that? Uh, uh, 1990, shot in 89. Well, that came after Dead Kids. Yeah, well after, yeah, because Dead Kids would have been, what, like 84 yeah. or so? Around about then. Yeah, sounds about right. All right, but well, before, cool. But uh, before Cut with Molly Ringwald, <laughs> about 16 years was ago. Was that Randall, oh, no, no, Rand- Randall Kimball? Kimball uh, Randall? He uh, went I on just, to direct Bait. Oh, okay, Bait wasn't bad. Yeah. Yeah, Bait was all right. Cut was shit, though. I want to go well, back. Well, you know what? Again. Cut is shit, but it's it, that is definitely a guilty pleasure. Mm. I actually love that film. I'm going to watch it again. I haven't seen it since theatrical. I, I, I did the see it in the movies. Yeah. Right. And Kyle Minogue was in it he briefly, too. He gets a tongue cut out with, with garden mm. shears. Oh. I know. Well. If that's not an in-joke. Yeah, totally. Then it had Stephen Curry. Oh, yeah, of course. Off the back yeah. of, of uh, The Castle. Yes. And was that Pride of the, the Nugget. <laughs> yep, The Nugget. Oh, my God. Yeah. Cool. Let's move on right. to another guilty pleasure, this one being mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really torn between two. Oh, it was two. Oh, it was two. Well, yeah, I had another one, but I'll without, watch it. Without, a, without a thesis, can yes. you tell us what okay. that was? Uh, it was, in fact, a film that's universally hated and yep. sits on roughly a one on IMDb from every review submitted, except for one review that a reviewer gave it a 10. I think they were just trolling. It's, um, in fact, Halloween Resurrection. This wow, that's fantastic. Eighth chapter in the Halloween franchise. Yeah, that's a huge guilty pleasure yeah. for me. I watched that the first time. I hated the shit out of it. I and then it I theatrically watched, and loved it. I watched it the second time and really, really liked it. Yeah, I liked it the second time. I liked it the third time. I watched it the other night. I was a little bit disappointed. Not that I'm seeing the hate. I was just like, oh, it's not as good as I You know what? I don't. It. I, yeah, I, I just love Halloween films and look, yeah. we'll talk about that a little bit later. Of course. I know you're a big fan of Rob Zombie's Halloween. Oh, too, fuck so off. I can't wait to hear about fuck that. Fuck right off. We won't even <laughs> talk about that. All right. <laughs> All right, right, so the one that I yes. the one I didn't choose. What was that? And I don't know why I'm going to say this because mm-hmm. I didn't choose it because it's so universally ridiculed, mm-hmm. and I've copped so much shit over the years. But fuck, I'm just going to say it. Good. Creep Show Three. I've never seen it because it, it looks shit. It is shit. I love one it and two. Shit. I love one and two. Who doesn't love one and two? And the yeah. reason this one was so poorly received because there's no Stephen King, there's yep. no George Romero. No, it's done by Taurus Entertainment, who mm. also made the crappy Day, Day of the, the Dead, Dead Contagion. Yeah, that's right. I saw that, and that was enough for me to never see right. Creepshow three. Well, Creepshow three is kind of bad, but I do like the stories themselves that are in like okay. you know, the anthology concept. Yeah, yeah. It's um. We won't go into that, but that's that's okay. what I didn't choose. Uh, now I'm curious like, enough. I know I, I should have watched it, but yeah. I just haven't. It is fucking terrible, but I yeah. I feel guilty that I enjoy watching it. Yeah, no, that's but great. the actual film I chose for this episode is House. Two, the second story. <laughs> and it's funny because you mentioned yeah, House 1 while we're watching House. that movie. I did. House is one of my all-time favourite films. House I is an amazing, movie. amazing film, yes. Loved but it. I actually really love House 2. Yes. Which was um, directed by the writer of House 1, Ethan which was Wiley, Ethan Wiley. Yes. yes. And he wrote and directed this one. Yeah. The story was written by Fred Decker. Uh, the first one. And the second Oh, it's the concept. Like, well, yeah, he always yes. denounces how much he had to do with these. Like, I basically came he, up with a yes. playhouse story, and they ran with it. But he's still credited with totally story by nice. Fred Decker. But anyway, regardless of that, it's set during Halloween, which is kind of appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a zero percent rating on to- uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of love for this one. Mm. Um, it actually stars Bill Maher, mm. you know, as a douchebag, which mm. is no surprise. Um, Amy Yazbek. And what I find hilarious, George Went from Cheers was in the first one. Yes. In part two, you've got John Ratzenberger. Yes, the other no, one. The, the other, other one. Bar, the That's right. Fly. So you know, yep. that was kind of a little bit of. I don't yep. know if it's an in joke or a replacement, kind of like what they did with um, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Caddyshack one and two. Oh, yeah, that was quite Maybe it's that kind of thing. But the story yeah, itself. One of the guys in in. Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, you go for it. So one of the guys in House, right? Yeah, there's the two guys, the two leads, right? Uh, William Cat. Uh, no, no, sorry, in House Two. Oh, Second House Two. Story. Yes, you got the two guys. There's two guys, isn't there? Yeah, I'll give you the synopsis. One of the guys, though, is that the guy that's in Fright Night that's, uh, like, the keeper of Chris Sarrett and Jerry oh, the Vampire? you got me. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean for... Could be. Okay. No, yeah. no, no, you, you give thinking, me these little brains. Mm, no, it just came into me, sorry. I'm, yeah. That's all right, I'll have to okay. look into that, because I hate it when you post something, or when anyone posts something, you don't yeah. have the answer like I that. Know. It's like shit, yeah. man. Sorry. Anyway, let's just... Go on. <laughs> hit to the pride, man. Hit to the pride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> oh, that's all good. But House 2, it's mm. actually the original Crystal Skull movie because it's a story about Mayans mm-hmm. and Crystal Skulls. And it's a, a couple move into a, an old family mansion and in the basement, is their great-great-grandfather is buried and they dig him up mm-hmm. and he's buried with a Crystal Skull which is supposed to bring, uh, what is it, eternal life, if yeah. you will. And they resurrect him. They just do. They yeah. resurrect him and he hasn't aged very well. 
and he also shows them the portal to another dimension which is full of prehistoric creatures and pterodactyls and mm. all kinds of really cool stop motion animation and I love stop motion stop motion and I'm watching it it is a PG film mm. it's not a horror film like the first one it's a fantasy film and it's just so wonderful I just yeah. really love the journey and the, the the sort of the high sense of um Harry Housen kind of oh yeah that's that stop motion that kind effects, of thing yeah. And, yeah no so that's that's my guilty pleasure because everyone hates it yeah I'm not a fan I, I always try to like it yeah. and I even own a day bill of it because I love <laughs> the art House yeah, artwork, art, house artwork is amazing. So it's like that creep show artwork. It's yeah, like, yeah. The yeah. gross anim- oh, what is it? The illustrations. Yeah, illustrations. Of hands Beautiful. And that. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, that said, I'll probably revisit it again soon. I always do it every couple of years. It's one of those films yeah. I do. I, I go back to it every now and then when I'm looking for something easy to watch. Yeah. I put it on. I don't know. It just brings out the inner child in me. I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's generally after I watch House, which is probably the wrong thing to do because you watch House and you're like, God, this film just gets better with age. And then you need to watch, you watch it on House too, and you're like, Oh my God, this film. Well, particularly because House Number Three, which is in America known as the horror show, yes, Number Three, that's a fantastic movie. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's a totally standalone, totally. It is, but you know, in most most region, it's House Three because I've seen House Four though. I have, I do have it. It's a shit movie. It's pretty crap. It's a redo of the first one, really. Bring back, yeah, William William Cat, Roger Cobb, yeah, yeah, to kill him off within ten minutes or something. Yeah, It's it's a bit of a mess, but. Yeah. It's just, yeah, a really ill-fated the, kind of what-the-fuck yeah. kind of movie. But anyway, that's my guilty pleasure, House Ooh. 2, the second story, which is creatively titled. Yeah, I actually, I thought the title was cool. Yeah, it's kind of quirky, cool, man. Yeah. It's kind of quirky. But to, to do a PG sequel to an R-rated film, yeah, or strange, a, strange a heavy decision. M-rated film. Yeah, well, it would have been R in the States. And yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. So PG-13 in the US. Very strange. Yeah. All right, well, you're going to take the lead on our, uh, what do we do, the obscure film of the week. So okay. each week we bring in some kind of film that's obscure. And pretty much every film we've talked about tonight is pretty obscure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Are. This is the obscure Halloween episode. <laughs> All right, so what's yours? Uh, okay, so mine is uh, is actually a French film. It's Ooh, called la, la. Uh, Eels. Uh, it's known as Them uh, in the United States. I don't think it's ever had a physical release in Australia. Don't know yet. if I've seen this one. Well, wait till you hear what I've got to say. All right, about go for it. You'll be watching it tomorrow. I'm all ears. Let me just take this Okay, okay. so here's the uh, synopsis for it. Clementine, <laughs> a primary school teacher, and her writer husband, Lucas, reside in a remote and beautiful fixer-upper in, Romania, uh, in the Romanian countryside. In the early hours of the morning, the couple are terrorised by an unseen assailant. What ensues is a suspenseful, gripping and harrowing remaining hour of cinema. No word of a lie, this <laughs> film has you on the edge of your seat for more than three quarters of its duration. Exquisitely shot with a beautiful balance of muted colour, the film is quite dark but you can never at any point not see what's going on. The score is well tooled, never overpowering, slow, brooding and effectively utilised sporadically throughout the film. The filmmakers often side with intense sound design of the rickety old house of the surrounding countryside to conjure the majority of tension throughout the film. The sound design has every microscopic hair on the back of your neck more erect than a 75-year-old in Viagra. <laughs> Man. Do you like that? No. Okay. No. Um, the filmmakers are very careful <laughs> to leave the identity of the assailant a complete mystery until the closing 10 to 15 minutes of the film. And by doing so, they succeed in keeping you in the clutches of the fear of the unknown, which I think is a, a lost art. Something some, uh, sorely lacking from, uh, from other contemporary horror thrillers. Uh, as it's for, more convenient, it feels, for the filmmakers to spoil a suspense by uh, blowing their load too early <laughs> and revealing a hideously disfigured villain gruesomely dismembering their victims. Um, I guess that's you know an equal share of impatient audiences and sloppy writing that's to blame. Uh, now, according to the opening credits sloppy. of the film, okay, yeah, you know you know what I mean. Like there was a time and a place. I'm just thinking of the entendre, the double entendre. Oh, I know, there's way too many tonight. We, we I'm totally very need... sexualized on this Halloween yeah, special. We need a pun section uh, <laughs> according to the opening credits the film's based on a true story now I don't know if that's fact or if this is a grossly exaggerated adaptation of true events similar to the nature of Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, admittedly I haven't looked it up to see <laughs> whether or not it's true and in a way I'd rather not as regardless of whether or not it's true or a work of fiction it feels real and that feeling is absolutely terrifying uh, now despite its setting in Romania the film's French uh, and although it emerged during the uh, that that new wave of slightly extreme French horror like Martyrs and Inside and Frontiers in the mid mm-hmm. to late 2000s is not dependent on violence or war, as I mentioned earlier. It's just pure suspense. I haven't seen it. You've got to see it. Like, right, honestly, what's it I, called? It's called Ills. Ills is um, in spell it. Uh, I-L-S. Ills. Okay, uh, but commonly known as Them. I would probably know the post if I saw it. 
Yeah, it's, it's, Maybe. it's so obscure. Like, I was working uh, at a store, mm-hmm. and I had a friend that worked at another store in sure. the same chain, mm-hmm. and uh, she put me onto it, and she's very... Erin uh, Gill, lovely yeah. girl. She's very well-versed with the genre. And she put me onto this film about the year after it came out and said, you've got to watch it. And I watched it with Danny thinking, oh, <laughs> well, what are these frogs up to making horror films? And no, we were just absolutely wow. terrified. Wow. And I watched it again, and it had the exact same feeling, man. That's it's fantastic, yeah. gripping. All right, well, I'm I will mention the Americans have made a version oh. of this, but they didn't remake it. I don't think they paid for any any remake rights or anything, but they did a similar film, right? Yep. And it was shit. What was that? I don't want to tell you, because then I'll spoil this film. Watch this film, and then you tell me. Oh, okay. Because if so I tell you, you'll, I will probably you'll, have you'll, seen it. you'll know okay. you'll know what's the general gist of this movie right. is. That's so. going to be a very hard ask, my friend. Yeah, don't do it. Because right. right, it's better watching this film of and course, it always enjoying is. it as a piece. Because if, if you know... Well, look, I yeah. don't... Yeah, I, I always prefer mm-hmm. to watch the original as any yeah, yeah. sane person would. Yeah. But yeah, if I have seen it, that could spoil things for me. And a bit the thing is, if you watch this French film, yep. you won't even know what the American one is until oh. the end. And then you'll go, oh my God. So what the fuck does it matter if I... <laughs> no, but if you, okay. if you know the American one, then yep. you'll know what will happen in the French one. Right. You'll go, ah. Oh, now I know what that movie's all going to be about. So Okay, so. cool. Um, then. Them. Okay. Mm. Ill. Yes. Wow. All right. Wee wee. <laughs> wee wee. <laughs> well, my obscure film <laughs> yeah. is a New Zealand film. Right. I don't even remember what year it is. I think it was late 90s or something. Oh, okay. Called The Ugly. Have you seen this? The Ugly. Oh, I have heard of it. It is um, a really brutal kind of slasher film, which I'm going to oh, show right. you the cover of right now. Oh, cool. Um, the reason I came across this film, do you remember there was a compilation film, or well, compilation DVD called Boogie, Boogie Man? Man. I knew yes. you were going to say that. Right. Yeah. Hosted by Robert Englund. Yep. Had Chucky. And he went through all the classic monsters. And yeah. in the middle of, like, you know, Chucky and Jason and Freddy was this guy, Simon, from The Ugly. Yeah. And I thought, what the fuck is this guy doing in there? Because no one knows of him yeah. and obviously that was just the distribution company looking yeah. to plug their movie because he had no place in that list but the film itself is really um, it's a really surreal kind of uh, serial killer film he plays a notorious killer um, genocidal killer matricidal killer I should say um, locked up and he's been interviewed and interrogated by a psychiatrist and describes his crimes and the crimes are shown in sort of flashback mode the interesting thing about the film is the blood, and there's a lot of blood, but it's all black. There's no okay. red, and it's a colour film, so okay. like throats are slit like you can't believe, but it's yeah. all black blood that gushes out. Okay. A couple of reasons I reckon that they've done that. It could be that the blood is so gratuitous that they didn't want to lose any of it, mm-hmm. but they thought, mm-hmm. well, fuck it, we'll just make it black so yeah, that yeah. the sensor board won't have an issue. Yeah. And then some people, and I kind of go for it, kind of theorise that the black represents an oil of a machine, and he's sort of thinking like a machine, and... No, okay, he's yeah, methodical yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and operates that way. But it's a really cool film. I won't bother getting stuck into the nitty-gritty of the story, but it's definitely mm-hmm. a film you should look at. You can probably agree with me, the cover art's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like the the, uh, the title treatment. The L is actually like a switchblade razor. That's cool. and, and all the lettering is the blood from, yeah. the, from the wounds. Which so. is red, though, not black. I know. But yeah, you've got to sell it. Exactly. Yeah. But it's a really weird film. Um, it's got a lot of downfalls to it. There's a lot of comical elements that don't belong in it. Um, for example, there's a couple of um, orderlies in the psychiatric hospital that have a real comic kind of Abbott Costello. They're like disorderlies, that, like that late yeah. 80s movie with the, the, the fat boys or yes. whatever they were called. That was a, I remember. Yeah, that's a yeah, guilty pleasure. Sorry. Right? <laughs> oh, sidetracked you. No, I've yeah. got to see this now. Anyway, The Ugly is quite good. I don't even think it's had a, a, an Australian release yes, or a New uh, Zealand release, which is kind of weird. Weird. It is, but um, I don't think anyone in New Zealand really knows about it either. The director that's didn't go on to anything particularly prominent. He did, did a lot of television, but... Yeah, yeah. You know, what was his name? It was Scott Reynolds, which is oh. a name I'm familiar with somewhere else. I don't know where, so I should mm. look that up. But The Ugly... Alrighty, cool, cool, cool. Let's go on to um, we'll do a discussion about uh, suggestions from people that have listened to the previous yeah. episode. We put out a, a call on Facebook for any suggestions, and there was one particular um, question that was far too big for us to yeah, comprehend on the podcast, and it was the, conven- to it twice. the conventions of horror and what they mean. What is horror? What isn't horror? And that's, yeah, that's yeah. just far too complex. I've done lots of blogs on that. Totally. And I have strong opinions on Absolutely. what horror is. Yeah. Um, for example, I do consider Twilight to be horror. No. Simply because of its conventions. The evil mm-hmm. you know, vampires. Not fantasy. 
No. No, no. it's famous. I mean, horror is horror, and it, yeah. there's a really strong um, thematic kind mm. of connection there. Anyway, I mean... No, no, I hear. You know, sense. people say to me, people say to me all the time, oh, why do you put Twilight in the horror section? And I'll say to them, well, where would you expect Dracula to be? And I'll say, horror. Yeah, like, but that's a love story. It's yeah. more beautiful than most other love stories, yeah. Yeah, but it's classically horror. Right. So it's kind yeah. of that. That's the philosophy I take on it. That makes sense. But anyway, we'll skip that. I could mm. talk about that forever. True. So we're going to go with uh, Addison Heath, good old Addison, who wrote uh, Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla and the upcoming Under a Kaleidoscope. Um, he sort of suggested we do a couple of Halloween-themed uh, discussions. Cool. Uh, first being our uh, favourite sequel to John Carpenter's Halloween. Excellent. And you're itching to know what mine is. I am. I'm, are you going to tell me? Yeah. Okay. Part six. Halloween six. The producer's cut or the theatrical? Um, oh, hang on. Part five, I should say. Part five, no, okay. Not part six. Not part six. No, no, that's no, the curse no. of Jason Michael Myers. The curse of Michael Myers. Yes. No, 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 no. Number five is the Revenge of Michael Myers. Yes. Yes. Yes, I think yes. so. It's the second well, one. Doesn't have second it, one with so Danielle fine. Harris. Yes. Um, that's my favourite, and I must okay. admit I haven't watched it for a very long yeah. time. Um, I think the last time I watched it was when the Aussie release box set came out. Right. But I've got the, the Blu- I've got the Blu-ray one. collection one um, pending, so I'll definitely oh, cool. give that a look. But yeah, no, that's my favourite one. What about you? Right. Yeah. No, that's interesting. I, I think. Um... Right, that's an easy question. I, find, I, yeah, I can't believe I said number six when it's written in front of me, part five. Uh, yeah, it's, it's too simple for me. It's, it's Rick Rosenthal's Halloween 2, not Halloween 8. <laughs> he did direct that. Halloween 8. He did, though. he did. Um, but no, Halloween 2, man. Yeah. I really like Halloween 2. And I think he, it's a natural extension of the first one. Definitely is. It picks up right at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's full of tension, mm-hmm. beautifully shot. Um, yeah. I you mean, don't think it's too much more of the same? Uh, look... Or that's what you want. That's what I wanted. Yeah. That's what I wanted. And I think that's why when 3 came out, Season of the Witch, I was really disappointed as a kid. But as I've grown up, I love Season of the Witch. Well, Season of the Witch is an amazing film. I think if that that concept of they were going to make Halloween an anthology film, so every year it was a different story. Yeah. Yeah. If they hadn't done that straight away from part two. Two, yeah. That's, yeah, absolutely. But John Carpenter was contractually obligated to do number two as it was. Yeah. Which he didn't want to do. No, I know. He wanted to make part three. That's probably why he never returned to the franchise. Yeah, absolutely. But no, yeah, no. Number two is good. I love two. Yeah, love it's got two. the hot tub scene. That's very cool. Oh, and it's also got um, that little line that's sung by what's his name? Is it Lance Guest? You gotta sing again. Uh, yeah, the bit where it goes. It, it, oh no, no, Lance Guest doesn't sing. He plays the love interest. It's the other guy, the, the greasy looking he, guy. He, and he goes, really wants to sing right now. Yeah, what is it? It's um, amazing grace. Come <laughs> sit on my face. <laughs> um, that and there's a line from one of the nurses. She says something along the lines of, you know, uh, you know. What is it? Men can't can't live with them, can't kill them. Can't oh, get some classic. Like that old that old nugget. You don't know what death is. <laughs> we've we've gone. That's from, in Halloween Two, though. I think, I as think well. so. We've gone from yeah. Trey Parker to Tom Waits. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I got versatility. I got range, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, so we won't talk about the Rob Zombie sequels because they're fucking yeah. shit. I hate them with a passion. They're in that box set. I hate everything. I don't care. I just won't watch those discs. Mm. It's but worth it for the rest. I'll tell you a funny story. Is, all right, uh, all the right. box set's got uh, Halloween One and Two, the Rob Zombie ones. Yeah. They've got only the director's cuts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, you know, theatrical director's cuts yeah. of, well, theatrical and television of one and two, and a producer's cut of six, mm-hmm. and a theatrical. They have got the director's cuts of those, which is, you know, that's what it is. Yep. But um, I jumped on the Canada uh, Amazon there. Sure. And they got a double pack for the theatrical of one and two, mm-hmm. and I bought them oh. just for completeness sake. <laughs> so pat it out. Yeah, yeah, I don't even like them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, I mean, I don't Definition mind. of I don't, obsession I don't, and addiction. It is. I don't mind Rob Zombie's Halloween theatrical cut. I don't mind it. Right. But it the just shits, cut, on, it shits on everything that John Carpenter stood for. It really does. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. But does, what, doesn't what? doesn't six though as well with that entering with all the bloody well yes you know the cults and yes, you know, it does. all that stuff. It does. It's well, that's, a bit weird. That's not a strong sequel either. But I mean, that's no, weak. And it gave birth to Paul Rudd. What did you? What was your take on H two O? Did you love? I like H two O. Everyone what? loves H two O. I do I like don't it. hate her. It kind of it kind of introduced it kind of introduced Halloween to the Scream audience. Yeah, absolutely. And that was great. Kevin Williamson was part of it. Yeah, I I appreciate what it was trying to do reinvent, and it did. It reinvented in a in a big way. Um, but no, the the Rob Zombie one. I won't go into it for no, too no, long, but yeah. why would you make his backstory, Michael Myers' backstory, mm. like low class middle, or low class? Well, that's what right Rob Zombie track. does, though. I know, but that's all he does. what makes him scary yeah. is there, and, and Loomis would say yeah, that. It could be any one of us. He kept saying he just is pure evil. Yeah, absolutely. Like he just is. There is yeah. no excuse. So Rob Zombie gave him an excuse. He lost mm. his scariness. Yeah. 
And that's just one of the many issues I have with it. No, I need it. And apparently with uh, Halloween 8 Resurrection, there's a whole bunch of stuff that didn't make the film. It's not even deleted scenes on the DVD. But apparently there's a whole prologue to Halloween 1 with Michael Myers sure. as a child. Mm-hmm. And no one's seen it. Well, no. like, there's, I think there's production stills and people talk about it, cool. but it's not out there. Okay. So well. I'm kind of glad that they didn't bastardise the original franchise by yes. putting that backstory okay. in there. Good. They saved it for a Rob Zombie to ruin. All right. Well, let's, we, we need to speed things up a little bit here. So, um, the, the other... Well, talk of Blood Moon. It slowed us down, wasn't it? Oh, my God. That, <laughs> it was worth it for Sorry. all the titties, man. It was yeah. worth it for all the titties. Always. And for the, for the Trey Parker rendition <laughs> of uh, Blood Moon. Was, that, was it yeah. Blood Moon? Anyway. <laughs> so the other question... <laughs> Addison had was um, well how about favourite Halloween themed films yeah. and we just watched one tonight um, mm-hmm. I'm going to go first um, first I thought about Clown House because you okay. know the Victor Slava film mm-hmm. controversial film but I think it's a fucking amazing film it's crazy. Um, it is at Halloween time but then I thought no I like Trick or Treat I think that's my favourite one the, uh, the anthology new, one the new anthology not the one, one with Sammy Kerr no rock and roll <laughs> rocking through your stereo <laughs> save your soul that's another song by yeah. Fast Way the band okay. We've got so many good sound bites tonight. So many good sound bites. I love Trick or Treat, the Sammy Kerr film. Yeah, it's great. I need to watch the Trick R Treat. The, the but I, now being one, a, being a fan of anthology films, I thought the new one was really fucking good. I, you know, really creepy. The connection between the stories, you know, mm. tying it all together. Yeah. Great cast. Fantastic yeah, cast. Yeah, some big Anna Pack yeah, 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 yeah. But that's mine. I think that's Oops. probably the one of the strongest Halloween films outside of John Carpenter's franchise. Mm. And what about you? I'm going to be boring. Oh, um, every Halloween we watch John Carpenter's Halloween. That's just because it's one of the greatest films ever made. But uh, if I had to choose another film, probably Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a great Okay, well, that, that stands movie. alone. Yeah. It, it doesn't need to be called film. Halloween 3. And that's the movie that really... Introduced to Halloween, <laughs> Halloween, Halloween. <laughs> I will stop seeing now. No, that's Silver Shamrock. Don't. That's Silver Shamrock theme song. So infectious and amazing. No, it's like you're serenading me. I'm I like, know. I'm, I'm slowly I'm... falling in love. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. Alright, let's wrap this fucker up, seriously. Um, we've got the giveaway, let's address that. Yeah. John Doe Vigilante, um, we've got three Blu-rays to give away. Uh, how can people win that? Well, all they've got to do is jump on our fakeshamp.net YouTube channel, watch the interview with Kelly Dolan, and tell us what Kelly Dolan's greatest, or who Kelly Dolan's greatest cinematic influence is. He names a particular filmmaker, and if you can uh, send us a private message via Facebook and let us know... Uh, hey, did you just say copy. fake book? Did that's I? an awesome. Did I say it? That's an awesome. Did I say thing. fake book? Let's do that. Did if you can book? hit us up on fake book with okay. a private message, I have no idea. Who was Kelly Dolan's uh, filmmaking <laughs> influence? Um, yep. Yeah, first three correct answers will totally. score the film on Blu-ray, which is being released by Monster Pictures. Monster Pictures, awesome. And speaking of Monster Pictures, mm. they've got um, Monster Fest coming right up in yeah. uh, November. What are the dates of that? Uh, November twenty to the thirtieth. So make sure you hit them up and get uh, tickets. Charlie's Farm is the opening film. There's lots of goodies that they've Tara got. Tara Reid, yeah. Kane Hodder, yeah, absolutely. Cast. That's an Australian mm-hmm. film, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was awesome. it from Queensland? Could have been. Yeah. Well, hit up the uh, Monster website. They we will announce. They will be announcing their program very soon. So uh, I'm really excited. I can't wait. Love Monster Fest. Can't wait. Reckon like, I'll I be there every know day. What's playing, but I just know that I'm going to be there for what ten nights. So yeah. It's going to be a lot of late nights. It's going to be great. A lot of movies. Can't wait. Yes, absolutely. And um, the Made in Melbourne festival we talked yes. about earlier that is happening around about the same time. November 27th to the 30th. That's right. It's a shorter festival uh, showcasing. Melbourne filmmakers so hit up their Facebook page or their website and check that out it needs support it should be supported and keep an eye out on our uh, YouTube channel and and, uh, the social media channels for uh, interview with those guys definitely do that and um, let's give enough a plug to our killer clowns you've got to come along totally join us Uh, you can come along dressed as a clown cosplay is most welcome yes and um, I would love to see some people in scary clown outfits that would be awesome I mean it's going to be a good night there's no work the next day because it's a public holiday we're going to have a few beers oh there'll be lots of beers I can't wait you know I will be straight Mm. off a plane I'll be landing from Vegas on that morning dude I will be really hammered you'll be jet lagged you've got to get a couple energy beverages or some decent coffees I'll I'll just take those um, recordings that you prevented, you presented to me tonight, <laughs> and, I'll, um, keep you awake. and I'll know that <laughs> You'll it's, never it's, sleep again. it's like a lullaby, you know. <laughs> it's doing it for me. I think it'll awesome. do it for the listeners too. All right, before we absolutely finish, mm. our next episode um, will feature two guests. We're going to have Aidan Pruitt and Sky Peterson. Now they're the two people behind the uh, documentary "A Venue for the End of the World," which I mentioned on the last episode. One of my favourite docos from the year. We're going to have them with us live. They're going to 
talk and shoot the shit with us and they're probably going to bring their own guilty pleasures and it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be fun to have them on and just see how we go with, you know, more people here and get get the vibe going. Should be cool. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for listening. This has been the second episode. It's been fun. I've had a lot of fun. Your voice has been so soothing. I'm ready to do an encore. Awesome. Well, let's um, let's stop recording and we can do some more of that. Absolutely. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you for listening. This is the FakeChamp.net podcast and we'll see you next time. See you soon. (laughs) Stand tall. Walk proud, reach out, you're playing for the world, don't cry, be strong, reach (laughs) out, go into holding on.